the Iron Age, especially in Northern Europe, many settlements were based around hill forts, though the use of hill forts was quite extensive both before and after the Iron Age, with Roman conquest and culture generally bringing about the decline in their widespread use. The hill fort was generally based upon a fairly irregular mound in an otherwise flat terrain. There's been a great deal of debate about the purpose for constructing these places, and even that different hill forts may have been built for very differing reasons. And many of them have layers of ramparts and ditches around them. Some of them actually don't make good defensible structures. And the generally low level of conflict around at the time seems impossible to justify the effort in construction in purely defensive terms. There, however, seems to be a lot less research in actually how the mound appeared in what is often generally a flat level of terrain. There's a possibility that some of these uh, may have their origin in something earlier called a cane, which relates to the Scots word for hill or cane. It owes its structure more to ice than any human endeavour. Going back in time, large parts of northern Europe were covered in thick layers of ice or glaciers. The movement of these glaciers was responsible for carving huge U-shaped valleys through many mountainous areas. However, on relatively flat plains, they are also responsible for the construction of canes. As the glacier begins to melt, towards the leading edge of the glacier, cracks or crevasses can start to form in the surface of the glacier. As the melting continues, the crevasses get wider and deeper as the meltwater flows into the gap. The ice and meltwater, however, also carry with it some soil, stones and rock, picked up earlier in the glacier's existence. When the water reaches the bottom of the crevasse, these deposits accumulate, creating a mound. Now, depending upon whether the water flows away from the crevasse or forms a pond or lake between two regions of ice, we detect exactly how this sediment falls out of the water and what shape of hill or mound it will eventually form. The water flowing away will generally create an isolated pudding bowl type of cane on with the lakes that can form groups of canes with related kettles or holes actually between them. Eventually the glacier will melt completely leaving behind the cane which is composed almost completely of sand and gravel. And these can be fairly small they can also be up to 30 metres or even more in height and can send for considerably greater distances horizontally. These large canes resemble the bases of some of the hill faults which are found around northern Europe. Could these structures sticking out of an otherwise generally flat terrain then have been selected by ancient tribes for the bases of a settlement, which are then upgraded and improved over the following centuries? It could mean that widespread adoption of hill forts as a centre for settlements or cultural or ceremonial hubs was actually related more to the geographical features of the last ice age than any human social and cultural endeavours, with ancient geography having a distinct impact on how society and culture developed in Northern Europe before the arrival of the Romans. But what do you think?